All right, thank you, Haley. A local chiropractor is accused of insurance fraud to the tune of $2 million. All for medical equipment that, in many cases, his patients didn't need. Some never even saw the doctor. This is Ahad Latfi. Between 2013 and 2017, the chiropractor is accused in a now unsealed district court case of scamming insurance companies out of almost $2 million for orthopedic inserts his patients didn't need. The indictment alleges 12 counts of medical insurance fraud laying out a scheme in which Latvi would scan a patient's feet and provide custom orthotic inserts through a company called Foot Levelers. But the problem came when Latvi went to submit the bills to insurance. Most of the procedures he was billing weren't medically necessary. Oftentimes, the case says Latvi didn't take medical history from his patients and in some cases never even saw them at all before placing them in order. And over the period of the scheme, he amassed close to $2 million in false claims and pocketed roughly half of that. The victims had their health care through Blue Cross Blue Shield and the Michigan Education Special Services Association, or MESA, a nonprofit corporation that provides health care to public school employees. In many cases, Latvi was measuring their feet right at area high schools. The BBB is actually doing their own investigation on him. Katie Grievous with the Better Business Bureau says Latvi now has a no rating with them while they investigate. She says the case is a good reminder to make sure you know what your insurance covers. And of course, it's a good lesson to watch out for unsolicited business. Be very wary of anyone going door to door or offering an unsolicited service. If you didn't seek them out, be wary if they're coming to you. You never have to make a decision on the spot. You can take their information, their website, their name, their phone number. And of course, contact the BBB with any complaints. Latvi's license was revoked by the state in 2018, and he sold his practices in Paw Paw, South Haven, Bangor, and Hartford. The indictment also shows that Latvi had his staff stagger the payments throughout the year so Blue Cross and Mesa wouldn't get John. Laffey was charged back in 2017 by the Michigan Attorney General's Office, also for Medicaid fraud. Well, pictures and videos are now telling a better story of an officer involved shooting in Kenwood last month. Fox 17 just obtained body and dash camera of the incident unfolding. And before we show it to you, a warning that the content is disturbing. But first, some background. On June 29th, officers responded to Stouffer Avenue on reports of that a man was in the middle of the street and had fired a shot with a rifle. Salim Powell was shot once by an officer and sent to the hospital, but survived. In the video released today, you can see Powell walking toward the officers with something in his hand. Kentwood police say that he was carrying a rifle. The officer fired three shots and Powell fell to the ground, threw the gun, and then eventually got back up and pointed one before he was arrested. Later in the video, you can see officers handcuffing the very alert but bleeding Powell, who appeared to cooperate with the arresting officers. The 24-year-old is now charged with assault for allegedly firing a shot before police arrived and threatening his neighbors. The Kent County Prosecutor's Office reviewed the shooting and ruled that the Kentwood police officer was justified in opening fire. Well, nine teenagers in custody suspected in multiple car thefts and shootings in the Kalamazoo area recently. According to the Public Safety Department there, the kids are between the ages of 13 and 17 years old. The arrests, which are from two separate situations, involve stolen cars. Police also recovered weapons and ammunition during both incidents. We're told five of the teens are currently at a juvenile home. Names and possible charges have not been released to us. One of the three people charged in the death of a 16-year-old boy in Kalamazoo last year has entered a plea to a lesser charge. Heather McLogan, a former nurse at Lakeside Academy, pleading no contest to third-degree child abuse. As part of her agreement, charges of involuntary manslaughter and second-degree child abuse were dropped, and McLogan will now cooperate with prosecutors against the other two defendants, Michael Mosley and Zachary Solis. Both men face up to 35 years behind bars for helping to restrain Cornelius Fredericks. The teen died in the hospital in May of 2020, just two days after police say he was improperly restrained by the former staff members. Mosley and Solis' case are still working their way through the courts. 
A Grand Rapids man convicted of distributing child pornography over the internet learned his sentence this week. Tyler Jander Noah will spend the next year behind bars. Jander Noah arrested in August of 2020 after police searched his home in Easttown. In addition to jail time, he'll also have to serve three years probation and pay $15,000 in restitution. And an update on the death investigation in Kalamazoo County. The prosecutor's office has now authorized open murder charges against the victim's son. Investigators are searching for Scott Sturfey. We're told that he has traveled out of state and was recently seen in Chicago and in Seattle. Sturfey is considered armed and dangerous at this time. He's believed to be involved in the death of his father, a father, a Dr. Thomas I, who was found dead at home in Portage on Sunday night. His cause of death is still unknown to us at this time. The University of Michigan is requiring all students, faculty and staff members to get vaccinated against COVID-19 for the fall semester. That also applies to remote students and Michigan medicine. U of M is asking for proof of full or partial vaccination by August 30th, but people may seek medical or religious exemptions. According to the university, about 81% of students and 65% of employees are vaccinated and 76% of Michigan medicine employees are as well. After previously announcing no vaccination requirement this fall, Michigan State University is now taking the same approach as U of M. All students, faculty, and staff will be required to get fully vaccinated against COVID-19 by August 31st. MSU is also requiring all individuals to wear a mask indoors starting August 1st in all campus buildings, and that includes other MSU facilities throughout the state. The Michigan Association of United Ways wants to help get more shots in arms. It is launching a new initiative in partnership with the state's nonprofit association called Get Vaccinated Michigan. United Way sites across the state, including the location in Ottawa County, will be serving as hubs in areas with low vaccination rates. The state and private donors are investing a total of $5 million into that project. The goal is to remove vaccine barriers to help reach the state's vaccination goal of 70%. A theater and TV production teacher in Cedar Springs recently diagnosed with cancer and is now sharing his journey toward recovery online for everyone to see. Yeah, he inspired a generation of students there and now says that these few weeks have been a whirlwind of support. Our Michael Martin joins us live in the newsroom sharing his message to all of his supporters, a lot of them his former students, Michael. Yeah, Doug Ryan, Justin Harden, known to the students who love his approach to teaching theater and TV production as Mr. H found out that he had colon cancer less than a month ago, but already he and the people who love him are rallying, committed to getting better and sharing that journey to get there with the world. Regardless of what hand you're dealt, regardless of the situations you're in, you, you can take a positive spin on it. For Justin Harnden, or Mr. H, as he's known affectionately by his students, has always been a glass half full type of guy. I think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a teacher and a coach and a person and a director that um, really loves personal connections and relationships. Uh, and you try to leave those kids with that. You try to leave those students with that and your players with that. Mr. H moved to Cedar Springs just under 18 years ago, teaching English, psychology, and theater, coaching girls' varsity athletics. Most recently, though, teaching TV production and theater full time. I went into the hospital on July 7th just because I wasn't. I didn't feel myself. I didn't feel. I didn't feel 100%. My ER doctor came in and said we got the scans back, and she sat down. And I don't think it's ever a good thing when a doctor sits down to tell you something. Diagnosed with colon cancer, Mr. H was quickly ready for the fight. Yesterday was my first chemo and I'm still uh, pumped into it right now. But he wouldn't be going it alone. Friends lined a road with signs of support as he drove to his first chemo treatment Thursday. I actually started to get to know Justin because he was uh, a teacher of mine when I was in high school. And um, then I graduated and over time and through college, I kind of kept in touch with him. I got a job teaching in Cedar and uh, we continue to stay in touch. Kyle Avink, now an assistant principal in Rockford, has become a close friend after being inspired by Mr. H in high school. He's the person that uh, when you graduate from high school, like that is the person that has made a difference in my life. Um, so he, he's touched an incredible amount of students over the course of time. The network of people who began reaching out to him was overwhelming, prompting him to begin sharing his journey through a Facebook page. So many people that love him. So we made that that uh, decision to put it out there publicly. And ever since then, it's just been such an incredible outpouring of love and support for him. And I think by being vulnerable, 
it doesn't make anybody weaker. I think it makes them stronger. And I think it offers a, um, it offers a much bigger chance of growth and success. His community giving him strength, but for the people he's affected over the years, they are also getting something out of his willingness to share such a vulnerable time in his life. Former students like Alexis Lucarelli sharing videos online of themselves singing songs from performances Mr. H oversaw. Just to have an adult um, who's not family or not your parents, who encourages you to be who you are, find out what you love, find out what you're good at, and live in that. Making clear the massive positive impression he has left on those who have come through his classroom. He is committed to beating this. Um, he is committed to being a success story. And I 100% believe that if there's somebody that's going to do it, it's going to be him. It's brought my family closer. It's brought my friends closer. It's shown me that I thought I had a huge network. Now I know I have a huge network. Yeah, an incredible spirit there to push forward and continue fighting. Now we have links up on our website to where you can follow along with Mr. H's journey and to a GoFundMe if you're able to donate towards his medical costs. For now, though, live in the newsroom, Michael Martin, Fox 17 News. All right, thank you, Michael. Still ahead tonight at 5, a nonprofit in Muskegon working to clean up and take back its community. Yeah, and they say it's working really well. The neighborhood, they say they've reclaimed with the help of a few local kids. I'm here to play and use the public tennis courts, you know, just like you want to. An athlete from West Michigan becoming the first male pro tennis player to come out as gay. Coming up, how he hopes the steps he's taken will help others. And if you're a fan of the comfortable, cool air, well, I have some good news for you. We're going to take a look at your weekend forecast coming up. All right, well, after a year off due to COVID, the Coast Guard Festival kicking off in Grand Haven today. There are events scheduled throughout the weekend and all of next week that you can check out. And hopefully, well, this is file video, but I'm guessing yeah. it was just as nice out there today as it was. <laughs> we can only hope. Yeah. And, and maybe yeah. even nicer, Haley. It's actually going to be even nicer. It's going to be stellar. Actually, Monday through Friday of next week, we are seeing nothing but sunshine for the entire work week. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. Now, as we look throughout this weekend, there is a small chance for some rain to pop up late in the evening hours on Saturday and lasting a little bit into Sunday morning. Otherwise, we are squared away. We're good to go. It's going to be a really great weekend. As we're taking a look now over a lakeshore, we can still see a little bit of the trappy water right now in Holland. So please use caution if you do intend to go over to Lake Michigan this evening, but we are shaping up for a really nice sunset opportunity. Grand Rapids currently it is sunny. It's feeling wonderful. Almost half having that fall like feeling in the air. 75 degrees currently partly cloudy and those dew point temperatures took a nosedive and that's what's making it feel so much better outside. As we look ahead to our almanac, whenever we are looking at our average temperature, kind of gives us a good idea of what we're going to be seeing going forward. Well, the surprising news is we are expected to be below average for the next several days. So our average is 83 degrees as a high temperature. We are expected to stay mainly in the 70s for the next several days. So where we are now is pretty much what you're going to see 75 degrees right now in Grand Rapids, 72 in Holland, 70 in South Haven and 69 degrees in Benton Harbor. So slightly a little bit cooler right along the lakeshore. Our satellite and radar showing that we do have a little bit of cloud cover moving in from a system that's going to be cruising by us mainly towards our south. That is not expected to bring us any precipitation for this evening. We will be staying dry this evening, but we're keeping our eye on the system that's right now north of the Upper Peninsula. This is going to drop in, bringing a cold front later into tomorrow evening, bringing our next chance for rain, and that isn't even going to develop until closer to 9 p.m. tomorrow. So our evening planner, nothing but good news. 70 degrees at 9 p.m. this evening, mostly to mostly clear to partly cloudy by 11 p.m. 65 degrees. And of course, those light winds coming from the north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. If this isn't a bonfire forecast, I do not know what is. So our future track shows that we'll have a little bit of cloud cover for this evening. Otherwise, a really nice sunny start to your Saturday. A little bit of haziness will still be in the forecast because of the wildfire smoke that we are still seeing moving downstream and sweeping across West Michigan. Otherwise, a really gorgeous day. So your full Saturday really going to be dry, partly sunny to mostly sunny. And then that 
that cold front arrives. This is a look by 9 p.m. So we are going to stay dry all the way through 9 p.m. A cold front will pass, bringing a few isolated showers, and you see how quickly it moves through. It's not expected to bring a lot of rain, but it's just in the possibility as that cold front does pass with a few more isolated showers possible into your Sunday morning with otherwise a mix of sun and clouds. So the lakeshore forecast for tomorrow, we do have a moderate beach risk only because the winds are going to shift coming from the southwest, leading to wave heights between one to three feet. Please use caution tomorrow, especially along Lake Michigan. Our drought monitor as well. This is updated yesterday and only a sliver of West Michigan right now is slightly abnormally dry. Otherwise, we are also squared away for our drought monitor. So our seven day outlook shows that we have a high of 79 degrees for tomorrow, 76 on Sunday and the 50s for our overnight lows. The nice news is that our air conditioners are most likely going to get a break for the next several days. We have a sunny weather streak. Monday through Friday, comfortable conditions, low dew points, and temperatures diving into the 50s overnight. Couldn't ask for a better seven day forecast. That's perfect. Thank you, Haley. A nonprofit called Taking Back Muskegon is helping kids find constructive things to do this summer, and it's seeing a lot of success. Yeah, it sure is. Fox 17's Julie Dunmire reports for us tonight. For the first time in 20 years at East Manor in Muskegon Heights, this park is unlocked, a place for kids to play, and that's just the start of the good things happening here. This looks like a car wash, but it's so much more. Kids attending Taking Back Muskegon at East Park Manor summer program are working hard to raise some money to go to Michigan's adventure, learning the value of a dollar, and most importantly, for the first time in decades, having a program right in their complex to attend during the summer. This is the brainchild of two people from Muskegon Heights, seeking to do good and reclaim this neighborhood as a safe place for children with fun things to do in the summer. That pride is contagious. The once littered with glass tennis court is now spotless. The president of Taking Back Muskegon saying pride is contagious in the best possible way. It feels so good to ride past here just on an off day and see this and see them coming to the park just to play. They weren't playing because it was empty beer bottles and yeah, it wasn't even worth coming in. Taking Back Muskegon also has worked extensively with the Muskegon Heights Police Department in partnership with them to make this a safe place for kids. Again, they started with just eight kids in the program at the beginning. Now they're up to 20. Reporting in Muskegon Heights, Julie Dunmire, Fox 17 News. All right, we're going to have Julie's full story in our next hour. So thank you for that, Julie. Still ahead, a Kalamazoo native and pro athlete making headlines after coming out as gay. He is the first male professional tennis player to do so publicly, the cultural shift he's hoping to see in the sport. This is an area that's been master planned for homes for over 17 years. Construction halted on a housing development in Kent County, now up for a vote next week. But coming up, the biggest hurdle of the project is continuing to face. Well, Kalamazoo native is making headlines for being the only male pro black tennis player to publicly come out as gay during his career. Fox 17's Lauren Coomer spoke with him and tells us why he believes that greater LGBTQ visibility in tennis is needed. Pro tennis player Lyndall Johnson is urging top male athletes to foster an environment where gay men can feel comfortable coming out publicly. It is a big responsibility, but why not? You know, someone has to pave the way and I'm, I'm ready to do it. Lyndall Johnson has been playing tennis since he was five years old, growing up in Kalamazoo's North Side neighborhood. His mom saying she knew he had a gift for it. I couldn't afford to take him to tennis, so he wanted to do tennis. So I bought him a tennis racket and a ball. And when he got out of school, I would walk him to La Crone Park every day. And he started hitting off the fence there. That's where it all started. Johnson continued to play as he grew up, joining the International Tennis Federation's Pro Circuit Tour back in 2013. While his family and friends knew he was gay, it wasn't something he openly talked about to other players, fans, and press. There's a lot of issues, there's a lot of toxic masculinity, masculinity in sport, and all of that masculinity is just like really been like enthralled into American culture um, and our social and cultural like situations and ideologies and I feel like it's it's really not right. Last year when the Black Lives Matter movement ignited, he felt it was the perfect time to come out to everyone, but not everyone supported him, including fellow players. I can be feminine and be girly if I want. You know what I mean? I can wear a ponytail, I can paint my nails. When I go on the tennis court, 
that's not going to stop me from performing, and people shouldn't judge me for that either. But this is how the world is. Lendl says he wants to inspire and encourage others who identify as LGBTQ to be their true selves as well, but of course, on their own timelines. Obviously, I do encourage it just because of the, the, men, the mentality. I feel like once you come out like as a player or just an LGBTQ person that you identify as, it's going to just be a huge weight off your shoulder. More about Johnson's life and career will be featured in an Amazon Prime reality show coming out later this summer called Deuces and Love. Reporting in Kalamazoo, Lauren Coomer, Fox 17 News. All right, thank you for that, Lauren. Still ahead, advocates say a new development could help a local housing shortage, but it is facing quite a bit of criticism. The main thing stopping neighbors from backing the project ahead of a vote next week. You're watching Fox 17 News. Thanks for staying with us tonight. I'm Ryan Cummings. And I'm Doug Reardon. A vote during next week's special election will determine the fate of a housing controversy in Sparta. A local developer wants to build dozens of homes to close the housing gap, but residents telling our Lauren Edwards it will be too dense. So the land you see behind me here in Sparta has been vacant for some time. A referendum stopped construction on it, and since then the town has been divided on what to do with it. Now on August 3rd, there's going to be a vote on that referendum, and that vote will determine the land's future. This is an area that's been master planned for homes for over 17 years. The 70 acres off of Alpine Avenue in Sparta is land John Bightley has had his eye on for years. He dreams of building 70 homes here. This is uh, probably what I would call uh, move up housing. It's um, not entry level, um, but it's also not uh, McMansions either. Three to four bedroom homes with three stall garages, 1,600 square foot ranches to 2,000 to 2,200 square foot two stories, selling for $300,000 to $350,000. So he got to work by first getting approvals from local officials. We did two years of approvals with the Township Planning Commission. Every item had been vented, whether it was lot size, whether it's uh, health department through the Kent County, whether whether it's road traffics, um, size of the lot. Here from the road to the trees is what people's lot would be. Bightley says there's also going to be a pond and a basketball court. He says he's doing all of this because the housing shortage in Sparta is severe. Independent contractor Amber Lewis says there's only eight homes for purchase in Sparta. It is incredibly low. I mean, so who wins the lottery in this housing shortage? Do you know what I mean? Of eight, who gets those eight? So. Building these 70 homes is going to give a lot of people opportunity. And it's not just locally, it's statewide as well, says Bob Filka, head of the Home Builders Association. Housing is, in our state, has been so underproduced for the last decade. In Michigan alone, we're almost 150,000 homes less than what we really need as a state. Bightley's ready to work. He says he's received a lot of support from officials and some locals. But as soon as he started construction months ago, he had to stop. We're being held back and it's not necessarily, um, you know, the businesses or the schools or the infrastructures or even even uh, water and, and septics and stuff. He says it's from residents who don't want the new development or the not in my backyard group. We're not against the development part of it. We're just against what, how the density part of it, what he wants to put there. Sparta resident Ken Hammerlin says we because he says many in Sparta feel the same way. I would like a country develop, but not another sardine subdivision is what they want to put up there right now. And you have no off-road park, on-road parking, no sidewalks. All your septic is going to be in your backyards and your wells. There's going to be a lot of it's going to be above ground. And he says the homes will be too close together. And I want a snow pond business and... and the thing about, about that is, where are you going to put the snow from these roads? Because you can't park on the roads. And one of Hammerlin's biggest questions is who gets the money from all this? And, and people that are going to uh, profit from this isn't going to be the community. It's going to be your, your, your people like your banks, your realtors, your developers, and all that stuff. But Lewis, who's also a resident, says the money goes to the community. This is a huge benefit for our schools, the library, the fire department, and all of the local businesses that have just popped up within the past year during COVID. Which Philco believes will attract new buyers to Sparta. The density is an issue, but the reality is if we're going to build affordable homes, homes that are the average Michigander can afford, um, 
the reality is you have to increase density. The referendum vote is on August 3rd, and Bightley believes the vote will allow for his dream to come to fruition. I am very hopeful that we get to build this and we can win this election. It, it, it will be a real jewel for Sparta if we get it in place. Now the debate has gotten so intense here in Sparta that there have been reports of signs being taken off and removed of people's property, signs that are in favor of the development, and some residents are saying they're worth thousands of dollars collectively. So I reached out to the Kent County Sheriff's Office and I put in a Freedom of Information Act request just to get a good look at the incident report. And they say right now it's all under investigation, so they're not going to release the report. And remember, that vote is on August 3rd. Reporting in Sparta, Lauren Edwards, Fox 17 News. Good evening, everyone. It is feeling so comfortable across West Michigan currently. Temperatures are in the 70s. We're at 70 degrees in Grand Rapids, 77 in Kalamazoo, and Coldwater, you are at 73 degrees, even cooler right along the lakeshore. If we're taking a look at what we saw 24 hours ago, you can see it's 10 degrees cooler right now in Grand Rapids, comparatively to yesterday at this time, and 8 degrees cooler in Benton Harbor. But also factoring in the lower dew points, that's what makes it feel so much better outside. Our winds are a little bit breezy right along the lakeshore, otherwise light winds for today and just a little bit of cloud cover mixed with some sun. Our satellite and radar showing there's a system towards our south. It is expected to mainly stay towards our south and we will not see any of the precipitation from this system. We're only going to see a little bit of the cloud cover. We're keeping our eye on the system up towards the north that's expected to bring a cold front to sweep across West Michigan later into tomorrow evening, bringing our next chance for some rain. So our evening forecast shows nothing but dry skies, partly cloudy at that 70 degrees by 9 p.m. this evening and 65 by 11 p.m. This is the perfect bonfire forecast with light winds in that comfortable air. You're also able to turn off the air conditioners if you haven't already because we will be seeing the cooler air for the next several days. Tonight our overnight low of 57 degrees, light winds around 5 to 10 miles per hour and partly cloudy skies. So tomorrow because it will still be a very gorgeous day. I know many of us are probably headed over to the lakeshore. Keep in mind that we do have the chance for a few showers to develop later in the evening hours and our winds will be anywhere between 5 to 15 miles per hour leading to wave heights between 1 to 3 feet. So please use caution along Lake Michigan tomorrow. If you're a fan of the comfortable air, the lower dew points, well, it's here to stay. We'll climb up to the slightly humid zone for your Saturday and Sunday as the chance for rain does develop. But by Monday and Tuesday, we begin our sunny weather streak and it's going to be very comfortable. Finally, those dew points really staying in the 50s and 60s. We're going to detail more about your latest forecast and your hour by hour coming up. All right, thank you for that, Haley. Michigan's longest serving senator, Carl Levin, passed away late last night. And today, we spoke with U.S. Senator Gary Peters, who took over for Senator Levin when he retired. He praised his tenure at the state legislature. Well, we're in a highly partisan world, and partisanship can be really tough. But ultimately, you have to build relationships because you have to find a way to actually make a difference in people's lives uh, here in, in Michigan. And I've taken that uh, to heart uh, each uh, and every day is that you have to reach out and make those kinds of relationships. Carl Levin lived it every day. He demonstrated it over 36 years. And in my mind, that should be a, an inspiration for anybody who is privileged to hold a elected office today. And Michigan House Democratic leader Donald Lazinski released a statement on Levin's passing saying, quote, Michigan has lost a giant of statesmanship and integrity. Over Carl Levin's more than three decades in the Senate, he set a shining example of working for the people of this state and staying true to his word. I offer my most sincere condolences to his family. And Michigan Congresswoman, uh, Congressman John Molinar said in part, quote, Senator Levin served the people of Michigan for many years and devoted his life to service. He was held in high regard by Republicans and Democrats and he will be long remembered for many achievements, including his strong oversight of the federal government. And finally, Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist saying in part, quote, Senator Levin was a giant whose power and dedication was felt throughout our state. Michiganders trusted Senator Levin to get the job done. Throughout all of those years, Senator Levin never backed down from putting Michigan families first. Unquote. During his time in office, Senator Levin was a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, a co-chair of the Senate Auto Caucus, and served 36 years in the Senate from 1979 to 2015. No word tonight on memorial services, but we will keep you updated.
Sunshine Mills has voluntarily recalled several dog food products because of mold. The FDA says that the items have elevated levels of aflatoxin, a poisonous carcinogen produced by certain molds. The food was sold under the brand names Triumph, Evolve, Wild Harvest, Nurture Farms, Pure Being, and Elm. No illnesses have been reported, but it can be harmful to pets if consumed in significant quantities. Symptoms include sluggishness, reluctance to eat, vomiting, yellowish tint to their eyes or gums, or diarrhea. Well, buying a new car has never been cheap, but reports say it's actually the highest cost that we've ever seen. The J.D. Power and LMC Automotive forecast says the average transaction price for a new vehicle is projected over $41,000 in July. That's a 17% increase over last year. Higher demand for semiconductor chips are causing lower inventory and less wheeling and dealing by dealerships just all in all. Experts say the inventory will remain tight all summer so buyers can pay off now or hope to wait out the higher price.